the EP podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. On this episode of the EP Podcast, Frank Murray from the Evergreen Park Library is going to be in here. Lorraine Swanson of The Patch has two stories. One involves a very big name in ice cream on the south side opening up a new location, nowhere near where they have been for decades upon decades, and a guy who stole an awful lot of one thing from all over Worth Township, including Evergreen Park, and got caught in the stupidest of ways. This is a 30-minute on-demand episode of the EP Podcast, the original. It comes out each and every Monday. Remember to check out our Thursday night live show now, every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. You can get it on our YouTube channel, through our Facebook page, through our Twitter account. It just streams right there. If you're on the YouTube channel or the Facebook page, you can interact with us. You can join the show. It's a lot of fun. And it is not a repeat of what you hear on this show. In fact, on this episode, you will hear no more than only five minutes of stuff that appeared on the live show. If you go back and listen to the live show from last Thursday, 55 new minutes that you've never heard. So it's not the same thing. Both episodes are brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. You need a bank you can rely on, one from the community, one that gives you 5.35% on an 11-month CD. That's nuts. 4% just on your savings account. And just like me having to open up a brand new junior savers account for the youngest guy after he got all that money at his first communion party, I know a lot of other people are doing the same thing. I was just in at the branch at 95th and Pulaski, and they were telling me how they're getting all kinds of new junior savers account for all those first communicants. Your kid doesn't need to be a first communicant, though. Start your kid off early with that account. They earn interest on every dollar they deposit. They get to see their money grow. It shows your kids how fun and rewarding saving can be, and it sets them up for success. There is no minimum deposit to open. Get one today. Stop in to that iconic building on the corner of 95th and Pulaski, the first national bank of Evergreen Park. But back to the live show. On that show, I showed an awful lot of video of my hitting prowess in the batting cages at Guaranteed Rate Field last week when I got to go in and, and do BP where the White Sox pretend to play baseball. And I say that because they're terrible right now. You had a good day, it sounds like. I did. I, had a, I needed a good day. Yeah. This is crazy. Listen to this. Monday, I get called in for a deposition that relates all the way back to when I used to be a 911 dispatcher. Yeah, you were saying. I haven't been there for five years. When they pull out like all the documentation for me to read, it's seven to eight years old. That's how long ago it was. How do they expect you to remember? Because you, how many calls would like you've had to have filled the thousands? This of wasn't calls. Even, this wasn't even a call thing. This was some oh. incident that happened inside of the center. Oh, oh, that's okay. what this was. Somebody, okay. th- th- somebody suing somebody, and it, and I just have it. But I got yanked back into the thing, mm. and in the process of it, I have to go over everything. I have to go over like you know this this incident occurred, and th- I mean some of them I'm reading. I'm reading about stuff that was happening. And there was a major crime that was happening or something was going on in the center. And I had blocked it all out of my brain. You know, when you walk out of that, you're like, I'm done. And I went back and spent three hours being asked questions and somebody like showing me a thing going, what happened on this day? And I'm like, I don't know what's written in the memo. Well, it says that this happened and this happened and you signed it. I'm like, that's it. Like I spent three hours doing that over and over again. It was miserable. It was miserable to do. And I walked out and I spent the rest of Monday just walking around reminded of how horrible like the world can be, right? Yeah. Just the people that were involved in it, the the 911 center with all the calls, right? And then on the drive home, I'm in the middle of traffic, and I don't know how you people do it who commute. I'm so glad I don't have to commute anymore. But it's I hated it. The worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. Like, it's just a mis you see everybody. Like I think for somebody like me who doesn't do that. You had to go into the city or I, yeah, I did. I yeah. had to go downtown. Okay. I spent forty six dollars to park my car to be a witness. And nobody would validate my parking. You should have done Spot Hero. But on the drive back, I guess to me, I'm like, this is going to take a long time and I'm not going to stress about it, right? And I'm looking around at just the misery and everybody that drives by me. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, you know, I feel very fortunate that I get to hang in Evergreen Park. I I get to do all my work right here on the south side that I barely have to go into the city. Because I can imagine if you're going into the city every day, you're done by the time you get home. 
You are. You're exhausted. Like, I don't know. How did I do this? Like before the work from home thing started, how did I get up every day, eat breakfast, shower, put on makeup, put on professional clothes, get in the car. I'm sorry. You're not getting up and showering every day. I'm showering. I'm not doing my makeup. I know, but you just threw in showering is how did I shower every day? That's what you just said. Oh, that's not what I meant. I heard it. Joining us on the screen right now, Lorraine Swanson of The Patch. How are you, Lorraine? Can I wash my hair for my for my clothes? <laughs> I love it. Uh, somebody stole an awful lot of uh, what was it? Uh, catalytic converters. Catalytic converters. This is like a massive amount of them were found on the south side. If you're missing a catalytic converter out of Evergreen Park, there's a good chance it was found recently. Tell me about this story, Lorraine. Um, the uh, Cook County Sheriff's Office said, said it was the biggest recovery of stolen catalytic converters in state history. Wow. I guess this guy's burglar alarm went off. Uh, he lived in unincorporated uh, Worth Township. And when they went to check his property, they discovered like all these catalytic converters in various stages of rust piled in his yard as well as some fresh ones and so he's been taking them for a long time is what you're telling me yeah he they found 612 catalytic converters in this guy's yard. this guy liked one thing he liked catalytic converters well it's got right? the platinum in it so but, that's but, why they but, want it yeah he went he went and got them all he went and collected he them. did uh and he didn't have any documentation proving that That'd be hard to come up with. License to sell or recycle or buy. But uh, he also owned a tow a towing company. You know, so as, as you know, catalytic converters, they, they can fetch up to $1,500. Yeah. Um, that guy was making some money. Allegedly. What's going on with Rainbow Cone? Because I see they're opening a new one in Orland. Strangely, right across from an Overweiss. It's like right there at 159th. Yeah. And, and and Harlem. Like, they could have picked any place. They basically opened right it up there. like, we're Rainbow Cone and we're taking all of your ice cream customers. Like, there's, there's an ice cream war breaking out at 159th in Harlem. <laughs> but we have the original Rainbow Cone. Is it going away? Because it's it, like, is it? this isn't going to be like one of those things where like, you know, a, a pizza place says, I'm done with this area and I'm moving out to the suburbs and then we lose it, is it? No, um, it was... Uh the the owners fan the original owners um they turned the operations over to the uh Buena Beef family and they're just expanding they have the capacity and you know and energy to do that so i it's not going anywhere i okay. haven't heard things so you know they're expanding the brand um I think I always heard that when you had a McDonald's, you wanted to put a Burger King across the street because, you know, people's appetites or they get a craving for something. And, you know, you might want a soft serve and then, you know, rainbow. Um, But it's going to be interesting. Yeah. A little bit of an ice cream war going on out there. Not here, though. Not really an ice cream war here. If something breaks out, if war is on the horizon in Evergreen Park. I will participate. Lorraine Swanson. You're participating in the war? I was just going to point out that Lorraine Swanson will report on it. Ice cream war? I'm going to give you Yeah, I'll report on it. (laughs) Thank you, Lorraine. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar, our good friend Frank Murray is here. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, Chris. Yeah. Doing well. How about yourself? Good. How how is the library right now? I would think that like like I always have the impression that people go to the library when they don't want to be outside because it's not really like a warm weather activity. Mm-hmm. So I mean, do you worry that like nobody will pay attention to you for the next couple of months? Do you get a, a sense of sadness when the sun comes out every day, Chris? I worry that no one's going to pay attention to us. <laughs> But thankfully, (laughs) thankfully, we have so many great things going on with the library. But summertime, like you're saying, you know, traditionally, yes, some people might come to the library when it's, you know, it's a little overcast, it's raining, snowing, they're looking for something to do. 
But summer, summer, we're gearing up for a lot of fun and activities. You got to do stuff. It's yeah. probably a lot of activities. You used that parking lot a lot mm-hmm. last summer. Mm-hmm. You did some festivals and you did some different things. And that was a good use of that lot that you have out there. And you got people over there for events. So I, I would imagine you're you're doing similar things. We sh- we certainly are. And we're kicking you doing off. Another, you doing another brewery thing? We're doing it. We're, well... I don't want to spill the beans. Don't yet. want to spill the beans. Don't yet. want to spill the beans okay. yet because we're See, we're in the planning. Frank stages. wasn't ready for me to ask that question, no. but I mean that's I, all I care about. I, I just want to were. make sure it's not in the way of one of my other brewery things yeah. that I go to. I need to get my schedule. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, can you get your here? I'll tell you what everybody <laughs> else's brewery stuff's going on, so I can be at your brewery. Thing yeah, as plan well. around this. Make sure it doesn't <laughs> fall in line. There. By no, the way, as you're planning fun. it, as you're mm-hmm. planning it, mm-hmm. two. Two Southside breweries mm-hmm. won medals at the World Beer Cup this week. Oh, okay. nice. Pollyann out in Lamont got a silver. And the winner of the International Pilsner, best beer in the world, some people call that award. Yeah. Little Wing from Horse Thief Hollow right here in Horse the Horse Thief Hollow, way to go. Against all competitors. That's amazing. Yeah, so remember them, I would think, if you're going to have a beer thing. They're going to be they're gonna be a hot ticket now because they won a big award. Well, good All for right. them. That's fabulous. But right. yeah, talking about summer though. Yeah, I'll just everybody circle the calendar now. Hopefully, I'll be back on before we we have the party. But big summer reading kickoff party Saturday, June tenth. It's going to be from one to four p.m. We're going to be having uh, rainbow cone ice cream. We're going to have a petting zoo. We're going to have a truck that you can go into, and it it's a video game truck. And we also will have like a v, uh, virtual reality experience in there too. Really? Um, and we're look also going to gonna... look at the links you must go through to get a, a kid to come to the library in the summer. This is exactly what I'm pointing out. Well, like, hold on. Like, there's one more we're thing. We're going to have VR and live animals. And we're going like, to please come to the library and read the summer. Chris, you bring up a very good point. <laughs> and yes, this is a big point. Big time for the library, right? right? It's our summer reading. So right. we want to kick it off in style. We want to get everybody in there, have a fun time, and sign up for summer reading all at the same time. We're also going to have the Evergreen Park Fire Department. They're going to bring one of their fire trucks. So you kind of get it to experience one of the fire trucks. And then we're also going to be having a uh, silent rave. Have you ever had a silent rave? No, what's a silent done? rave? Silent rave. So there's going to be an app people can download, and you get to pick out your own music. So instead of like a live rave where every, you know the music's playing... Uh, out loud on a speaker system right you're just gonna uh, download the app select your song plug in your headphones and dance to your own music so you're gonna have a bunch of people dancing the different music while wearing headphones is this indoors is that why you're doing it because they're in the library it's gonna be uh it can be either inside or outside the library uh, we'll have wi-fi and everything so as long as you can connect so it won't be like a dance floor like i imagined a dance floor Mm -hmm. with a lot of people dancing, but none of them are listening to the same thing. Is that what you're doing? That's what we're, that's what we're going after. I want to just go to watch that all throughout. Yeah, I know we're going to, I'm not going to have headphones in. I just want to watch people dance. (laughs) Dance, Yeah. You know, they dancing to, I just want people to dance in silence. I think it'll be eerie and weird and fascinating. And I want to watch it. That's the classical selection right there. (laughs) What dance is that? Yeah. (laughs) Like, like there's somebody like doing the unst unst like fist pump next to somebody who's doing ballet. Like that's what I want to see out there. And And there's no noise. Uh huh. Right. It's going to be pretty cool. It's incredible. Okay. So summer reading, are there, are there perks? Like if a kid reads so many books, they get to go to great America. Cause I remember when I was a kid, I would get that. Yeah. I, not, I don't even know if it was from my library, but I know that there were like those things every once in a while, like read enough books, get something out of it. Oh yeah. The kids we, getting something. We're going to have tons of incentives and that's what I'm hopefully going to be able to promote on the next podcast. Okay. So I don't want to jump too far ahead. Don't but have I just it want, yet. Just want to, well, we've got it, but I don't want to spill all the beans. Okay. Like I said, you know, all right. But Saturday, June 10th, folks, circle the calendar. It's going to be a blast. Circle June 10th. Mm-hmm. I'm circling it right now. Can't wait to have the Lanudis out there. Yeah. Maybe I'll, co- Rainbow Co- Rainbow Co- maybe I'll bring the podcast out there. Rainbow Rainbow I'm not making any promises, though, but maybe I'll bring the podcast out there. Oh, there we go. Maybe we'll, we'll come there out there. Go. Which we do have an event scheduled with Chris. He's going to teach you how to podcast coming up in the summer. So, again, wait for your newsletters. They're coming out. I'm, I'm so glad you out. said that because I completely forgot that I agreed to that. But you're right. <laughs> I agreed to that right before I went on vacation. Somebody and I had forgot. the phone call and sent the emails, and then it just went out of my mind. I went to Florida and forgot about everything I committed to beforehand. So that's great. I'm glad you reminded me. And a shameless plug on your own podcast, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're telling me about it. I'm like, I am. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I am. Chris is like, wait a minute. <laughs> we'll have fun in that class. Yeah. His we eyes will. did kind of like, what? We'll what have fun that? in that class. If you want to you want to learn how to podcast, we'll have fun in that class. Trust me. So again, we'll promote that again at the next yeah. podcast. Yeah, on the yeah next let me know when it's coming yeah. up so I <laughs> actually show up to it. <laughs> well, glad you'll be there, Chris. <laughs> glad you'll be there. Um, and we just, we just, you know, for the rest of May here, we've got a lot of fun activities going on for all ages. I'll start with our kids stuff that we have going on. 
We have Kids Craft Night Wednesday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m. It's for grades K through 5. They're going to be making sun catchers. We have our all, uh, always famous Lego Club, which is going to be on Tuesday, May 16th at 6.30. You're not making anything in particular. It's just kind of an open play for kids to come in and just um, have fun. My but kids' school has that now. Lego Club? O- over at Redeemer, they have, they have Lego Club now. My, my youngest is in Lego Club. Yeah. Which I think is fascinating as well, because like when I used to play with Legos, I played with Legos by myself. Yeah. That was a by yourself, by yourself toy, right? right? Right. Like you couldn't find any friends that day. Mm-hmm. Your mother was sick of you. She <laughs> locked you in the room. It's pouring out. She told outside. you, if you don't find something to do, I'll find something to do for you. So you know you're going to have to do work or clean your room or something. So you grabbed the Legos and started building and stuff. started building, yeah. Now it's a social thing. Now it's a social Yeah, District 124 is even doing it too. So That's cool. I don't know if they all saw the success of the library's logo. Oh, you think they're all ripping you off? Not ripping us off, but borrowing. No, it's you okay. Know, you can cool. say they're ripping you off. Uh, borrowing. Hey, you can say it. It's fine. Right. No, look, it's fine. I feel... Honored. I think the library feels very honored. <laughs> Listen, there's a guy running around on YouTube calling his YouTube show EP podcast. I have no problem saying he's ripping me off. Right? Whoa, now it's that's okay. a rip off. That is a rip off. That's a rip off. I haven't seen that. That guy's going straight to hell for doing what he did. <laughs> he's been rejected by every single podcast like network uh-huh. for putting it up. But yeah. YouTube's the wild YouTube west is, and they don't care. Yeah, YouTube is like YouTube, I sent him all yeah. the trademark stuff and I'm like, yeah. eh. We'll look into it. I mean, they're just so frustrating. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So there's a guy out there. Stay away from him. Good luck. I don't know what he talks about on his show. Just gonna, stay away from him. I'm going to have to double check my emails yeah. now when look I get them. Look for the green symbol <laughs> with the EP that looks like the thing on the back of your car. That's how you know you have the right one. Because I don't, I don't know what the other guy's doing. Well, is he at least Evergreen Park, Illinois? No, he's in Delaware. Delaware. He's in Delaware. Mm-hmm. His name, his initials for his name are E and P. So he decided to call it that. He doesn't even live in an Evergreen Park, Delaware. And he Delaware, claims huh? to be a marketing guy, but he's not smart enough to Google the name he's going to use before he starts the thing. Yeah. So eventually it's all going to get taken down and everything he's done over the last three months is going to be erased. But I, it's just, And it's an annoyance for me. I'm annoyed. Yeah, that's I'm so annoyed I'm interrupting annoyance. your segment. Keep that's going. That's all right. Don't yeah. worry about it. That, yeah. Get it off your chest. I'm fired there. up about it. Get off your chest. He's lucky he's in Delaware. Well, we will not do he's work with South the EP Justice Delaware guy. Yeah. <laughs> we will stay away from <laughs> stay, him. Stay off of the EP we Delaware show. We are not having show. him at if the I library. If I hear you on the EP Delaware show, you're off my show forever, Frank Murray. He's not teaching a podcast. <laughs> that's for sure. He at better not be. He better not be. <laughs> <laughs> Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708 425 1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. Our good buddy, Frank Murray, the director of the Evergreen Park Public Library down here at the bar. Uh, What else you got going on, Frank? We also have the Smart Cookie Book Club, Tuesday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. We're going to be discussing The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. Secret Zoo? The Secret Zoo. How do you keep a zoo a secret? Read the book and let's find out. Uh, and that then was the, foreboding. I know, right? Okay. But let's, well, let's I was a little out. creeped out by that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm pretty sure it's not a creepy book, so I probably right. used the wrong uh, no, inflection fine. there. Um, and then also for our crafters that want to have a fun time, amazing morning makers, Friday, May 19th, and Friday, May 29th at 10 a.m. for ages 2 to 5. We'll have all sorts of fun arts and crafts for the kids to participate in. And for our teens, we have... Our anime club is going to be meeting on Thursday, May 25th. They're going to be doing a little uh, content creation with uh, anime music and video. How, how many kids you get in that anime thing? My daughter's super in anime. Yeah, we got we got a core. We have a really good core group of kids. There's about seven kids that show. Up. I don't think there was as many kids that were in anime when I was a kid as there are now. I yeah, went it's, to C2E2 about a month uh, or so ago with her. It was like a gift that she wanted to go to. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of teenagers running around doing it, like, you know, dressing up as like some some weird character from anime and they're super into it. It's like amazing. Yeah. And she bought like, she bought this thing called the sky bison from avatar. A sky bison. Yeah. Huh? I, I'm trying to remember what his name is. Appa or something like that. It's got six legs. And she carries the thing around. I'm like, you're 17 years old. <laughs> hey, but that's how we they're, anime they're, 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 that's how they're into. Right. That's pretty cool. Hey, have her stop by. Anime club. Yeah. I guarantee she'll be there. Thursday, May 25th. Yeah. And then we've got our stack and stem, 
uh, for teens. We're going to be making a DIY t-shirt beach tote. DIY t-shirt beach tote. We're going to cut it up, fold it up into a beach tote. Oh, you're turning a t-shirt into a beach into tote. Into a beach tote. It's going to be a lot of okay. fun. Thursday, May 30th at 3.30 p.m. Do you do anything big on Memorial Day weekend? Do you take that weekend off at the library? Yeah, we're going to be closed. It's a great question, Chris, because I can give a little plug. I asked I asked a poignant question yeah, from you time did. to time. You, yeah. every, every once in a while, yeah. you, do, you do that. Yeah. I always love when, they, when, the, when the guest goes, good question That's or excellent question. question. I'm always like, it was an excellent question, wasn't it? Like, it makes me feel good. Trust me, when somebody says that to me, I feel good about myself. Give yourself a little pat on the I appreciate back. it, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be closed Sunday and Monday, uh, that Memorial Day. Sunday and Monday, and then that's when the library will start being closed on Sundays. We'll be closed on Sundays through Labor Day weekend, and then we'll pick back up. Um, it's the off-season. You're coming into the off-season. It, it, it's, it too, it's too nice outside. I you know it. what? It's an odd off-season because literally summer reading is when we get a ton of people come in to participate and take part of all and the you'll great be out, And you'll be out at all the events in Evergreen that happen with your table, and you'll be handing right. out stuff and everything else like that. So it'll feel busy. It's going to be super busy. Even yeah. though it's the off-season. It's basically when the library becomes something other than just a place you go get books. But it's, it's been that way for a while with libraries, hasn't it? Finally, Chris is coming around. Here we go. Here we go. When I was a kid, I went to Scottsdale Library. Uh-huh. Okay. And that, that was that was that was our Chicago Public Library because I grew up in, in the Ashburn, St. Dennis neighborhood. Yeah. And I would go over to that one. And I do remember they would have like 4-H there, right? And they would have yeah. some programs that were there. But it was nothing like what you guys do at yours. You guys have something going on every day. And it's for different age groups. So, like, kids, to like, senior citizens and adults that are looking for jobs and everything. I mean, like, all this stuff that you do, it's it, like the, the definition of a, a local library, I think, has changed. For sure. For yeah. sure. And, we're, I mean, uh, libraries are adapting. We're becoming much more truly community places where yeah. you can, um, whether it's a book, you're, it's access to information community gathering place that's what they're that's what we're there for pretty soon you're going to have like a food court in there like a mall used to have oh man if right? we got a food court i don't think we'd you're gonna get a sabaro in there Woo. food maybe, court and serve maybe some alcohol cinnabon? cinnabon and a sabaro that's cinnabon cinnabon sabaro and uh <laughs> we can have uh get some alcohol in there serve some alcohol i, I didn't say alcohol frank said it he said it three times you can tell how bored he's going to be in the summer Frank Murray's going to be down in his office with that mini fridge. We got, we got to take has. a look at the library's strategic plan and see if that's worked <laughs> into show up, If you need to see Frank in the summer, show up at 9 or 10 in the morning. If you get there at 2 in the afternoon, you don't know what you're going to get out of him at that point. At that, at that point, no. staggering up the stairs. <laughs> what are you doing here? It's summer. What do you need? <laughs> and our, my teen librarian wanted to make sure that I, I mentioned this. We're having a local young adult author, Rebecca Gardner. She's actually a former Central Middle School teacher, now... Um, author. She is going to be discussing her latest book. Um, it's a story about friendship, first love, and self-confidence. That's going to be Saturday, May 20th at 11 a.m. Books will be available for purchase and signing. Please come out and enjoy that wonderful author event. Is she from here or is she visiting again? Uh, she's she's from here. She's a former Central Middle but, School teacher. Does she still live here? I believe so. Really? Yeah, I believe well, so. Now I'm going to steal her and put her on as a guest. There we go. Get See, her on. you came in, you gave me a name. I'm like, I'm going to get her on this show. Boom. I didn't know about her. Um, and another person that you probably had on the show or or maybe will in the future, Bob Ehrlich. I feel, Bob? Like I, I feel like I might have. He's uh, Evergreen Park's... Uh, Monarch Garden expert. Yeah, I feel like I've. I feel you've like had I've, to have. You've had to have Bob on. Do you know how many guests we've had? We're five well, years in at this point. Well, you know that, right? It, we we started the broadcast basement. It was incorporated in May of two thousand and eighteen. Congratulations! We're five oh, years your five year right celebration. Five Congratulations! Years, not five years since the first EP podcast show because it took a it took a little bit of time to make sure it was all set up properly. Right. So that wasn't in May, but we'll be celebrating the five year anniversary here at some point. And we'll let everybody know what we're doing and stuff. But like we're five years into this experiment. Congrats! Yeah, Congrats. that my wife looked at me and said, "You're going to do what? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? Yeah, what are we doing? Well, you're doing what?" And look, you proved it wrong. I, there I, you I, go. I don't, I don't say that out loud because tomorrow <laughs> it could all fall apart, Frank. You never know. <laughs> well, congratulations. Chris. AI Five is probably going to awesome. take my job AI. pretty soon. Very good. <laughs> I don't know. AI cannot replicate Chris Lanuti. <laughs> That's for sure. But I brought up Bob. Bob uh, it has he's the curator of the library's Monarch Garden that is on the south side of the building there. So if you haven't seen it, come check it out. Give it a, probably another month here. Um, probably in June, it's, uh, all the wonderful plants will bloom and will be full of monarch butterflies and caterpillars crawling around and having fun. But Bob's going to be, uh, um, he does a plant sale, annual plant sale. It's going to start Monday, May 8th. 
you can call and schedule an appointment with Bob to come shop around at his house, 708-203-2809. Then the sale is going to move to the library's lobby from Wednesday, May 24th to Saturday, May 27th. Come on in. Uh, half the purchases made go to the Library Foundation, so it's an excellent fundraiser. You get to uh, help help cons- uh, conserve monarch butterflies uh, and donate a little bit to the library. I'm buying and plants, though, right? I'm buying yes. plants, flowers, not butterflies, though. Not butterflies. Right. It's it's all plants related to monarchs. What does Bob think about your butterfly squish art thing that you do from time to time? Over oh, you there? know, he was a big fan of it. Was he? He was a huge fan Weird. of it. Weird. Yeah, okay. Know, right? Yeah. yeah. I hope he's not listening to this You don't episode. actually squish butterflies, right? No, we did okay, not so. squish butterflies. All not right. actual butterflies, no. Ants dressed as butterflies, Ants right? dressed as butterflies. <laughs> and then we have another local author coming to, to Evergreen Park. Uh, she's actually from Oak Brook. Or, excuse me, Oak Park. She's from Oak Park. But Elizabeth Berg, she's going to be at the library Friday, June 2nd. It's an after-hours event. She'll be there uh, at 6.30 p.m. And I don't know, she's she's a, a very prominent uh, local author. She specializes in some feel-good stories, um, but she's going to be there promoting her new book, Earth, The Right Place, and that's Friday, June 2nd at 6.30 p.m. You got a lot going on. Yes, we do. You got a big finish here? Illinois Libraries Presents, so it's a consortium of libraries that work together. There's about 150 of us where we all pull our money together to bring in uh, larger big-name authors. We have um, Jonathan Van Ness and Christy Yamaguchi. They will be on Zoom Wednesday, May 17th at 7 p.m. You can sign up through the library's website to register and get the uh, the Zoom link. Um, but they're going to be talking about Christie's children's books, her experience ice skating. Very cool. Frank Very talented. Murray comes in here. He's got, he throws out big names. Whenever he throws out the big names, though, they're on the Zoom, you know? I mean, I'd be a little bit more impressive. if Christie Yamaguchi was sitting there, you know, hanging out at the library. Drinking beers at his at his brew thing. She probably isn't a big beer drinker though. I've seen her. She's very she's a very tiny person. It might go against her. Yeah, it might you know, might, might be something skating. she doesn't do. Yeah. yeah, her body her body's a temple. My body is not. Chris, big names. I mean, in the summer we got Chris Lanuti coming out to oh, teach EP pi- oh, podcasting. Look at this guy. That's why he gets to come out every month. It is now time for your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard, and Cool Clouds wants to give you an alternative, a great taster bar, incredible CBD products. They're in that location now, northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie, next to the soon-to-open Spoken Vine. And you can see all they have to offer at coolcloudsvapor.com or just stop in and see them in person, 3148 West 95th Street. You still have time to join in on the spring challenge of Move with the Mayor. And Move with the Mayor is a national initiative that works with mayors across the country to challenge their communities to be more physically active. And guess what? Mayor Kelly Burke is a part of it. One of the activities you can join the mayor for, walk with Mayor Burke at the Farmer's Market at Yukich Fields on Thursday, May 25th. It kicks off at 9 a.m. Grab your sneakers and walk with the mayor. That farmer's market, by the way, is open if you didn't know. May's theme is all things spring. The majority of the vendors are spring plants and flowers. The market is open every Thursday all the way through October the 26th, 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., 89th and Kedzie. Any questions, call the Office of Citizen Services at 708 422-8776. The Evergreen Park Fire Department is having a kids' health fair that is May 24th, 3.30 until 6.30 in the afternoon, 9,000 South Kedzie. Mark it on your calendars. And the village is seeking candidates to fill two available seasonal building attendant positions and one full-time equipment operator. Go to the village website for more information and to apply. As we look ahead to some events being put on by the Evergreen Park Youth Department, we'll bring that to you from Sid Sauce. Evergreen Park Small Business grows the peppers here in the EP, develops the hot sauces in Evergreen Park, delivers them to your door. The Mango Ate Your Baby is a hot sauce that is currently referred to in my house by my son as the best sauce we have. I asked him the other day, what do you want for the tacos? He goes, 
the best sauce that we have. He knows exactly which one it is. It's great. Check it out and all the other options, SidSauce.net. On Saturday, June 17th, mark your calendars if you have a kid 12 or older that wants to take the American Academy of Pediatrics babysitter class from 9 a.m. until 3.30. It will be at the Community Center, 3450 West 97th Street. It is a $60 class. This is a great one. I mean, they get certified in CPR. They learn all the things they need to know to safely watch not only the younger kids in the house, but they can go out and do their babysitter job, and you're not that nervous about what they can handle. Only 10 students per class. Registration form and payment due by June 9th. You register, cash or check accepted, at 3450 West 97th Street, Room 105. That's where the youth department is. Also looking ahead to June, a tie-dye party in the Youth Garden on Thursday, June 29th. Mark your calendars. It kicks off at 3.30 in the afternoon. For 3 bucks. kids can bring their own white t-shirt and tie-dye supplies will be provided. It's open to students in grades 3 to 12. You must register by June 23rd at the Youth Department. And remember... This summer, the Cycling Experience Historical Tour of Evergreen Park returns. It's open to youths grades 5 through 12 and their families. It is a bike ride through the EP that kicks off at 9.30 in the morning on Saturday, July 29th. You are going to travel around the EP in a big giant pack of bicycles and learn all about your village. And that's going to be a fun thing that I'm sure we're going to cover and hopefully talk with Paisha Allen over at the Youth Department as it gets closer. Speaking of who we're talking to, something we talked about on the live show, again, check that out every Thursday night, 8 to 9 p.m., YouTube, you can put it right up on your TV, Facebook, right on the Facebook page for the EP Podcast, even the Twitter account has it. But one of the things we were talking about is the last episode of the EP Podcast, the one about the new ownership in Porter Cullens here in Evergreen Park. One of the biggest episodes we've had in the five years that we've done the EP podcast. And it's amazing when you hit on something that everybody in the village wants to know about. And they want to know about what was going on over at Porter Cullens, obviously. Remember, if there's something you want us to cover, or you want us to ask a question about, or somebody you want to hear from on the show, reach out to us. The EPpodcast.com has a contact form for you to type us a message. You can hit us up on social media. You can even leave us a voicemail through the website. I want to hear from you. I want to see you on Thursday night as well. Thank you very much for signing up for the show and subscribing anywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the E. P Podcast Evergreen Park